To be brutally honest, I think overclocking graphics cards with how they're manufacturing the type tolerances in 2020, frankly, is just a big waste of time and not worth it. Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech and it, welcome to part two of three. So we'll be doing three parts to this until I get enough samples to do part three. But today we're gonna be overclocking the RX 6800 XT Tai Chi from ASRock. We're gonna be looking at the QBIOS, see how well that does. The performance BIOS, and then we're gonna be looking at stock, rage mode, all the auto undervolt overclock features, put them all together, then do a manual overclock and find out how much room we have left in this card and if it's worth it. So taking a really quick look at the specs as the system I'm running, so my 5800X, precision boost overdrive enabled, 32 gigs of 3600 megahertz memory, 240 millimeter AIO on the ASRock B550 Extreme 4, the Corsair CX750, which that will change in the near future, just a heads up, be quiet case. WD Blue SSD, and that is it for that. Let's take a look at a couple specific conditions. Just a few things to note. Uh, these are all new tests, so these might vary a little bit from my official like, benchmarks. There could be a lot of reasons. You know, I have a couple more things running. Uh, I am running a 3440 by 1440 and a 1920 by 1080 monitor. Um, all the benchmarks are done at 3440 by 1440, including the synthetics. So I even set those to custom runs. I have GPU-Z open, Radeon settings open, Windows Explorer, different launchers are open. Of course, I have RGB enabled as well, more FPS there, right? And the CPU is set to Precision Boost Overdrive. We have a couple of different profiles here. So at stock, it was running 1.15 volts. At least that's what it said radio on settings. Uh, 2387 was the base speed, 2000 megahertz on the core, no power added. Auto undervolt um, said it was going to set it to 1.06 volts, and then everything else was the same. Auto core would keep everything the same except for the core clock was set to 2450. Auto memory overclock would boost it all the way up to 2150. That's a max you can do on the slider. Then I went ahead and tried doing all three of those at once. And then I tried rage mode, and then I tried to do a manual overclock with 15% power added in. So let's take a really quick look at the volts here. So just about everything ran 1.15 volts according to GPU-Z. The exception is, is when I set it to 1.25 with the all-core forced overclock, and the auto undervolt did report back at 1.25 as well. Did not report back to 1.06 I was set to, but it is what it is. So the manual overclock performed the best. I don't think we expected that. Range mode came in second, followed by the all-core overclock. And then we have the individual auto memory and auto core overclocks coming in after that. The auto undervolt actually gained a little bit of performance over stock, I'd be it. It's at the bottom of the chart. There's a reason for that. You'll see that in a minute. And this is why. We got two games to show you, and you can see that the auto undervolt performed at the bottom of the table. The two highest performers were the manual overclock, and we're looking at Watch Dogs Legion and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, both very high settings, 3440 by 1440. I actually didn't check for motion blur, full disclosure here. Um, all three OC came in slightly behind there, it was actually tied with the memory overclock. Then auto core overclock and stock were dead, tie, dead even, except for one point in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, with the auto undervolt again uh, in a not a sizable, but definitely a repeatable last place. Temps were fine. I mean, the hot spots were definitely getting the upper 80s, lower 90s, which is where I expected to be. The core temp was pretty good on most tests. Rage mode, I didn't really expect it, given the performance. And the next slide is going to make it even more confusing. Uh, seemed to form the best in the core, but definitely not the um, hot spot temp. Neither did the auto core overclock. But the core temp is pretty much good across the board, the auto overclock being the warmest, but basically upper 60s, lower 70s when adjusting at 20 degrees Celsius, and upper 80s, lower 90s, you know, they kind of fluctuated back and forth. But again, nothing to be concerned about, about what we expected, and while not on this chart, the GDDR6 memory stayed in the cool lower 60s on all tests. Now here's where we want to talk. So this is what GPZ was reporting. And the reason why we're talking about it is if you look at rage mode, which is second from the top, it more or less runs with the auto speeds. A little bit faster on the core, a little bit slower on the memory. And it actually performed consistently slightly above everybody else. 
and the manual SE performed the best and it actually had a decent increase. We were seeing about 150 megahertz on the core over stock. The stock would be you know right around at 2407 and a solid 170 or am I doing math right? Yeah, about 172 on the memory, so times that by four, 340, 340, 680 effective megahertz um, over on the memory clock. So it's a little confusing. My only thought is could be drivers. Um, range mode also might have more consistent speeds, less drop-offs. Whereas when you're doing some manual overclocking, you might run into periodic power spikes or voltage spikes that may cause it to be less stable. So those are my thoughts. But let's go ahead and we have one more thing to look at and we can go ahead and wrap it up. So we've got to talk about power draw. Manual OC with the plus 15% power was 334 watts according to hardware monitor, GPU-Z, and um, uh, hardware info 64. When running auto core overclock and range mode, we were a little over 300. Everything else came in the very high 200s. Auto undervolt didn't really touch that at all. Um, we, we can bring back power. I didn't really want to mess with that too much, to be honest, but you can go as much as 6% negative. But what you're going to see here is just keep this in mind. We were running about a 490 ish power from the wall on every test except the manual OC. The astute among you probably know that there was one missing and that was the Q BIOS. When I turn the computer off, switch it over, booted it, also tried restarting it, it would just black screen and keep flashing. So I said screw it, not dealing with it, it's perfectly fine in, in PBIOS mode, just performance. So that's why it wasn't showed there. Rage mode, again, reporting lower, lower speeds but higher performance, I think it's due to power consistency. Could be my power supply. Not sure, we'll find out. Anything past 2600 megahertz on the core crashed, uh, but at 2600 it was fine. Uh, 2625 didn't work, I even tried undoing the memory overclock, but 2150 and 2600 was fine across board, no issues. And here's the elephant in the room. We gained, to get that performance, we gained 100 watts of power from the wall. Now I didn't measure the power on all of these. I was just keeping on my power meter, except this last one I watched adamantly. We really never touched 500 watts until we touched the power slider. And that's gonna kind of tie into my conclusion a little bit. But do know, um, the car is pretty quiet. It's again, the power supply fan is quite loud. So pulling that kind of power on a 750 watt 80 plus bronze, Again, I might revisit this in the future, but we could potentially be running to a power issue. Not entirely sure, but I'll do some testing, and if you don't hear from me, just assume that it's fine. Well, I made a pretty bold statement, used it a little bit for clickbait, turns out I was right. When you take a stock reference card, and if it has a colon capacity, and these cards do to some level, overclocking can make sense. When you go from 22 or 2250 megahertz to 2600 when you're bringing the memory clock up a couple hundred megahertz that can have some sizable gains when you get a factory overclock card it's already pushed pretty far like the tai chi or the nitro plus or i guess the gaming tree or whatever there's just not a lot of headroom left in the silicon that's just the reality we didn't run the thermal headroom i don't think we we're in the power limits but i'll check into that and i'll do a fall video if we did but to be honest rage mode was the best option it didn't produce as much power as a manual oc it ran a little bit warmer than not overclocking. It didn't crash, so that was fine. <laughs> Q bias much. It worked, but to be honest, I'm just gonna run it at, st at stock. I'm happy with that. The performance is fantastic, and I'm really getting into, and, and, and I'm hoping you agree, is this stuff should really be one button. If it's not one button overclock, I don't really wanna mess with it too much because I feel like most people don't. And I feel like most of you probably don't wanna go into tweaking too much because it's not like back in a day where you take a 2600K from 3.6 gigahertz all core, I think the max boost is 3.8, the 4.5 or 4.6, that just doesn't happen anymore. My 5800X might get another 50 to 100 megahertz on an all core overclock if I'm lucky. So the headroom's not there anymore, but anyway. If you want to buy this video card, I'll give you a, a rough link to Amazon, but it probably won't be available for a few months. But if you do follow that link and buy something, I do get a small kickback, so do keep that in mind. Like it if you liked it, dislike if you dislike it, leave a comment, get subscribed. Stay tuned, part three will be coming on this video card here shortly. And as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech, and I'll see y'all later on.
down the road.